Happy New Year everybody, uh, I hope it's gonna be very good, full of health, love, uh, your dreams which comes true. I cannot believe we are already in 2023, so let's make better art and better mistake this year. This is my very, very, very first project in 2023. I am Asia Marker Lemon Creation and uh, I do art journaling, if you don't know me. Mostly, not only. Uh, I am working today in my altered book. Uh, this time I started from the back. I glued two or three pages together actually out of the camera. That's why I showed you the glue I used. So basically when I'm working in the altered book, I glue always two, three pages together to make them more sturdy and avoid the uh, seepage. And uh, also because the last page is the page of the cover and the cover uh, was already made and I used black gesso on it, I didn't want this black gesso to be visible. So instead of using um, absorbent ground, which is clear or clear gesso, I decided to use white gesso to cover this blackness, which I didn't need for my page. First I did it with the palette knife and now I am going over with the brush uh, so I'm sure uh, you know the uh, paste, the gesso doesn't uh, go onto the cover and it's actually, I get actually a good coverage. And to make a little bit more uh, fun this page and to make more texture I am going once again with the palette knife adding a tiny bit of gesso, this is a heavy one. Uh, super heavy even, just so, but you can of course use any other one. Uh, I uh, made some kind of a texture of the palette knife and now when I'm drying it very close to the edge of the just so, very close to the paper, look what I'm getting. Uh, those small bubbles are super nice, they give the nice grungy look, which I love. Uh, just be careful if you have a lot of just so, you can uh, get kind of a air packets and they are uh, less nice. <laughs> As you can see, I got a few of them here. They are quite big. Uh, you can still work them out a little. Or you can make them flatter with the uh, palette knife or even with your finger if it's not very gluey, the gesso, if it's not very wet. But uh, the best effect is to add a little bit of gesso and get the small, uh, small dots. Uh, this is my stencil, crisscross stitching, and I'm using it with the uh, cream paste from Stamperia. Uh, for the full list of products, uh, just check the description box below. You're gonna get all of them there, and you're also gonna get my affiliate links, uh, which means that in case of some uh, shops, not all of them, but for example, Lindy's or Washi Tape Shop, you're gonna get a discount also, which comes with affiliate link. And uh, you're gonna get, uh, you can choose the products I'm using at no cost for you. Uh, and here I am with my uh, Lindy's Magicals. It's been a while since I last used a Lindy's Magicals. And I mixed two sets. I don't remember the name of the sets right now. Uh, one is a um, Meadows, uh, oh no, I don't really remember the set. But as I said, you're gonna get it in the description box below. Uh, and I am adding it with the brush to the dried page. Of course, you can add it to the gesso which is not dry or to the uh, paste which is not dry, uh, but I dry it in this case. You're gonna get a slightly bit uh, different effect if you do it. And of course, you can learn new techniques, new ways of adding color, new way of getting the nice effects. Uh, but I wanted to have a page which is a tiny bit, uh, I don't know how to say it, not perfect, no, but that's not a good word, but I wanted to have uh, more control. When the paste is, uh, or the gesso is still wet, you have kind of uh, less control and you have to be careful if you add water later and you have to add water for the uh, powders. Uh, the paste can run a little bit and you gonna uh, get the, um, the stencil which you put before it can just uh, change a little. It's not gonna be as clear as it is if you dry it first before adding the powders. I hope that makes sense. 
So what I'm doing is I am adding the paste, adding the water, drying it and then if I see that I'm missing a color like in this case uh, I add a little bit of spray. They are water reactive so you need to um, be careful how you add them. You have to have a tissue or piece of cloth at hand to just wipe the excess or wipe the colors which are mixing up in the way you don't want them to mix. And those two colors I'm using, they are actually flat, uh, magical, so they don't have shine and that's what I wanted. I didn't want the shine, I think I just had too much shine <laughs> with the Christmas period. And as you could see, uh, I got no seepage because I had these papers, these three pages which were glued together and also a layer of gesso. And uh, I'm using the stamp now with, with distress oxides. Once again, distress oxides are water reactive, which is actually in this case super cool thing for me you're gonna see in a moment why uh, I add too much of this stamp and the fact that this is not uh, archival ink or stays on ink uh, makes me work with it a little bit better and the places when I didn't like the stamp uh, I just took a brush filled with water and I remove the stamp uh, you have to be careful, of course, not to remove too much, not to put too much water so it reacts too much with the paint. But that's the thing also with Distress Oxide, you can work with it and you can remove the excess or the parts when the stamp didn't print correctly or printed a little sideways, which is the case here, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, when I print parts of the stamp. I don't use acrylic block because it's much easier to do it like that. But then you have, uh, of course, the uh, risk of not printing the uh, stamps straight, especially in case of the stamps like this one, which is called Enigma, by the way. And uh, it has to be kind of straight. And also with the stamp, which are rubber mounted, which you cannot actually see when you are stamping because the clear stamps you can see through. You can see where you are stamping if the image is straight as it should be. In this case, you cannot see that. So you have to rely really on, on the feeling, basically. And uh, I have too much of white, so I am reusing again, or re-adding again, uh, the, black, uh, the white gesso, sorry. It's a super heavy gesso. I put a tiny bit on the lid and I use a brush which um, should be dry, is not very dry, you know, the, uh, this is called the dry brush technique, but if you do it uh, quietly, if you uh, uh, make, uh, or if, you know, if you pay attention, <laughs> it's gonna work. And I showed you the lid because I put the gesso in the lid, uh, like that I didn't have a transfer of the paints to the box itself. And I cleaned the lid afterwards. Uh, I use a piece of uh, black thread I add to the page with the tacky glue and the deer head, it's I think some kind of a stamp I had, I am not sure, which I colorized I think ages ago, uh, again I'm not sure with which colors, but I just found it in my stash and I thought it's a little Christmassy, a little wintery, I'm gonna use it. And I'm using my mix, uh, my really messy words and uh, I was not sure if I'm gonna use the white white word <laughs> or word which is written on the white background or the word which is uh, written on the uh, dark background because I have two options in each book of words. Um, I decided the background, uh, the dark background is better to uh, with this page, to work with this page. Uh, and I also decided to add a little white, uh, dark accent to the um, to the deer. I think I'm having problem with the word dark today. <laughs> and when I actually colorize uh, his uh, eyes, I decided I or I've seen that it looks kind of angry, and that's not the way I wanted this deer to look. And in a hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have added the black accent. I'm not sure. It's for you to judge. But uh, after making the eyes uh, and the nose, I said, oh, he looks, he looks angry. I have to add a little bit more of dark accents. Maybe it will just, uh, you know, take the anger a little away because you're going to see more black accents and you're not going to be focused so much on the eyes. 
and uh, that's what I did. This is a permanent, uh, um, permanent marker. It's a very uh, calligraphy pen even. It's a very cheap one, but it works fine. And I know that I'm not gonna be adding any more water, so it can stay like that. And guys, this is a finished page, very easy. And something to kick off uh, the 2023. Uh, thank you so much for watching, for subscribing, for checking my shop. Uh, link in the description box below. Uh, thank you so much for the last year, for making the purchases, for being here with me. It means so much, you have no idea. I wish you from the bottom of my heart all the best for the upcoming year and I hope I'm gonna see you uh, in my videos, on my social media and in my shop. Send you a lot of kisses guys. See you soon. Bye bye.